rich history of this place owes much to its geographical location. Located in the borderlands, the gateway from the Carpathian Mountains to the lowland plains, on the navigable Sand River, which of course created great trade opportunities. And that is why this town, Chemischl, grew up. I'm standing here in the Market Square in Chemischl at the beginning of our journey, a journey through history which takes us from the end of the Roman Empire to the end of the Second World War. A rich history of people, of buildings, of institutions. Join me on Poland Daily History as we see Chemischl above ground and below ground. The First World War ended, and of course, inevitably, the newly emerged Poland found in this particular region itself in conflict with the West Ukrainian authorities. The Poles on the 1st of November declared a provisional government, and on the 3rd of November 1918, a Ukrainian force tried to occupy Przemysl. A body of veterans fought them off, and not for the first time, not for the last time in its history, the San River became a border between the Ukrainian forces and the Polish forces. The battle to who could be first to relieve their respective troops was won by the Poles, and an expeditionary force arrived from Krakow on the 10th of November. They gave an ultimatum to the Ukrainians, and on the 11th and 12th of November, they were able, the Poles, to occupy the city finally and remove the Ukrainian forces. And so it remained. Przemysl finding itself on the right side, or the left side of the Curzon line, was part of the newly emerged Poland, which after the Soviet War of 1920 was a clear, clear border. And then, of course, we move forward in the interwar years until we come inevitably in this part of the world to another war. This time, the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939, the Nazi Germans invaded Poland. Carol, that's where we start. This second section where we look at the effects of the Second World War, talk us through what happened next. World War II brought heavy military action to the city of Przemysl and Poland as a whole. Poland was completely unprepared for this attack, despite numerous army, because the Republic of Poland had about a million soldiers within its ranks. However, they also had a lot of dated equipment. The general mobilization of the society, which occurred in August 1939, resulted in the fact that we did not have a fighting chance. Wskurać. Miasto Przemyśl, które praktycznie, czy pobliskie tutaj miejscowości, które się podniosły po oblężeniach związanych właśnie z pierwszą wojną światową. The city of Przemyśl, as well as the surrounding areas, which fortunately got up from their knees after the siege of World War I, were struck once again. Przemyśl też. Pierwsze takie naloty działania wojenne w mieście Przemyślu rozpoczynają się z 8 na 9 września. The first war activities began here between 8 and 9 of September. The railway infrastructure was to be completely destroyed in order to cut the city off from the rest of Poland. Jest to proste. Mimo tak genialnego lotnictwa, jakim było Luftwaffe, pamiętajmy. Despite Luftwaffe being such an outstanding air force unit led by the supreme commander Hermann Göring, who himself was an aviator master of World War I, they did not manage to hit the railway station. Instead, they hit the Royal Hotel. Bombs are also dropped on today's Sportowa Street, former Targowica, Mickiewicza Street, Primary School No. 5, the Franco Mill. On the street of Mickiewicza, which we see here below, the pictures that we lack, for example, in our school. However, none of these bombs hit the Przemysl railway station, which allowed it to survive the this day in the form we can appreciate it. 
When the Germans entered Przemysl on the 9th of September, they began their occupation, which did not last for a long time, as it ended just 19 days later, on September 28, 1939. Why was it so short? The signing of the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact right before the outbreak of World War II resulted in the fact that the area of Poland was split in two. The difficult placement of Przemysl on the map of Poland resulted from the border being placed on the San River. Again, the San, uh, San River, a border between, on this case, the Soviet forces and the Nazi force on the other side. City divided between Germany and the Soviet Union. When the Germans were entering the city of Przemysl, the Jewish community was certainly not enthusiastic, as they knew what fate they would meet. The Ukrainian community was much more happy. Meanwhile, when the Soviets entered the city, it was the Ukrainians who feared for their lives a lot more, while the believers of Moses were more enthusiastic. Let's remember that the Jewish population made up around 30% of the entire population of Przemysl, which translated to about 19,000. There were a couple of bridges still operating in the city, there were overall four of them. However, the bridge we can see in the photographs is the railway bridge, which was in a way a border between the two parts of the city pomiędzy jedną częścią miasta a drugą częścią miasta. Tym mostem się głównie poruszano. Poruszano się również też i mostem drogowym. It was this bridge that people usually used. Naturally, they used a regular road bridge. However, that was relatively dangerous due to the fact that Polish units blew it up when retreating from the German forces. Until 1941, the cooperation between the Soviets and the Third Reich ran very smoothly, which can be seen on these photos. In the area of Zasan, which was occupied by the Germans, crude oil was being excavated. Która najprawdopodobniej e, była wykorzystana między innymi do ataku właśnie na miasto Przemysl. This crude oil was then most likely used to attack the city of Przemysl, as well as for further expansion and attacks, like in the Battle of England and France. This was a very odd time when on June 22, 1941, when the Barbarossa Plan, the attack of the Third Reich on the Soviet Union, was initiated. Even before 6 a.m. that day, they all were still transported from there by the Soviets, which makes the entire situation a historical paradox. Jeszcze przed 6 rano właśnie ta ropa jest przetransportowana, więc to jest taki trochę paradoks historyczny, ale tak niestety to właśnie wyglądało. Miasto Przemyśl, które znowu przez parę kolejnych dni... Przemyśl was being bombarded yet again for six whole days. This is what it took for Germans to storm the city. We need to remember one thing. Had Hitler not attacked Stalin, Stalin would have done it faster, because of the Molotov Line, which was a system of border fortified regions built by the Soviet Union along its new western borders. This borderline can still be seen to this day, however, it did not amount to much during World War II. Soviet. And, and so, uh, following the attacks after Barbarossa, Przemysl was essentially occupied by the Germans until late mm -hmm. 1944? Dokładnie. Dokładnie tak. Do 1944 roku um, Przemyśl był w rękach niemieckich mniej więcej do około 26-27 lipca tegoż roku. Kiedy... Precisely, yes. Przemyśl remained in German hands until about 26th or 27th of July 1944, when the Soviets liberated these areas. This difficult period of Poland becoming a so-called satellite state began just then, when we came under the jurisdiction of of the Soviet Union. Przemysl, which was demolished in 30 to 40 percent in terms of the city's infrastructure, only managed to be revived by the 1980s. I and as we look around, we see these photographs, which are all too typical of cities destroyed during wartime. It doesn't really matter who the attacker is, the destruction and the death for those who are caught up in it is, is, is the same throughout the world. And of course, we see these horrific 
pictures of, of wanton destruction, so unnecessary, but that, I guess, is what happens during war. Tak, ale patrząc na te fotografie, <coughs> przepraszam, poruszamy się na co dzień tymi ulicami, chodzimy, wiemy, gdzie co się mniej więcej znajdowało. Looking at these photographs, it is so uncanny. We can see all these streets we are using today. It is so difficult to imagine what would it be like to encounter German or Soviet units shooting up certain buildings here. Nevertheless, the imagination allows us to put it all together. The Przemysl ghetto is one of the darkest pages in the city's history. The ghetto was operating for over a year and was being eradicated step by step. Jews were being shipped off to death camps, for instance to Bozhets and Auschwitz, but also to the Przemysl fortress, which was also used as a place of execution for the Jewish population. The so-called Grochu forest is a place of burial for over 2,000 Jews. Jewish people. They were driven to this area in cars, stripped down and murdered. The worst situation happened when children would run away. This always makes our imagination realize what humans are able to do. So we need to talk about such horrifying things too. Almost the entire Jewish population of Przemysl was exterminated. To zawsze pobudza tutaj właśnie to wyobraźnię, do czego ludzie są zdolni. Więc e, trzeba też o takich i strasznych rzeczach powiedzieć. Praktycznie cała ludność żydowska miasta Przemyśla została eksterminowana. Very, 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 very sad. This almost impossible to believe that you would sort of go around killing, murdering people just because of their, their religion or their, their, their racial group. You know, they, they, even when you see these sites, it's still very hard to understand. Anyway, we come eventually, all good things come to an end, and all bad things come to an end, and the, and the war ended, and of course in 1945, Poland, slightly different geographical ba boundaries yet again, but Poland was re-emerged as the Polish uh, People's Republic ultimately, until the changes in 1989, of course, Chemisl found itself, as it always had been, more or less, yet again placed firmly in the, within, the, within the borders of Poland. So that's actually, Quite a, quite a happy ending to the story we've seen from the original archaeological start of, of, of Shemis all the way through to, to the end of the Second World War and, uh, and to today. So that's actually probably a, a, a good note on which to end this, this, this tour. So thank you very much, Carolyn. We'll, uh, we'll meditate on these, on these scenes and how lucky we are today to be living in a time when we see a Shemis with its buildings restored and people going about their business laughing and um, happy. Thank you. Thank you.